How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. This is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck. We're back in the basement for this one. I'm sorry, I know you like the backyard, but I've got to film real ones today. And if you haven't subscribed to real ones, you definitely should. I've got a video coming up about the cycles of horror. I'm working on one about the VHS franchise. I want to do one on the black phone and of course Shelby Oak. So if you're not subscribed, head over to that channel. It's linked down in the description and subscribe to it, please. In today's video, I've got two topics to cover, starting out with the reason why Valve is waiting so long for the Steam Deck 2. And after that, my friend Felix has a brand new app that you can go beta test right now to get your best deck settings. Speaking of Felix, he is back to sponsor the channel with his app Deck Filter. If you have not heard of Deck Filter, you should go to the App Store or the Google Play Store on your phone right now and download it because it's the best Steam Deck companion you can get. It helps you sort your library to figure out what game to play next. You can get great metrics like deck settings. You can get great metrics like how long to beat. You can even filter which setting site you prefer and change the theme of the app to look as nice as you want. It's a great tool to keep track of your Steam library and I know mine is ever growing. So having a tool like that is excellent. It's linked down in the description and I wanna give a huge shout out to Felix for helping me keep the lights on over here. If you haven't heard, the ad rates on YouTube have dramatically fallen off this year and they were already low to begin with on deck content. So any sponsorship I can take that's a quality product, I am appreciative of. But let's jump into the first news story here because I saw an article on The Verge that says the GPD Win 5 wants you to embrace the cord and I didn't really understand what it meant so that means it's basically the best headline ever because it got me to click and also read the entire article and I've kind of kept up with the GPD Win 5 honestly I don't really keep up with any handhelds outside the Steam Deck and maybe whatever Windows and Xbox are doing with the Xbox full screen experience because I want to see how similar it is to the Steam Deck so I'm not like super tuned into the PC handheld world but I guess what the GPD Win 5 is and the win that it brings along with it is the fact that it uses an Asus Strix Halo chip, which is like a next generation chip, and it gives great performance. Like there's benchmarks all over the Verge article that show it doubling every other handheld's performance on the market. It can get up to 60 watts of power, and that's where the big problem comes in. It has a battery, but it clicks onto the back of the whole handheld itself, and you can actually use the battery as sort of like a bridge between the wall and the handheld. So the ideal way that GPD wants you to use it is always plugged in. So the handheld itself is super light. It looks like a PSP. It has great performance and you can clip on a battery to it. But if you do and you run it at the full power, you're going to get like 45 minutes of battery life. So what they want you to do is keep it plugged in, which also makes it a lighter handheld and makes everyone happy. And that's an interesting idea. I know people who use the Legion Go, the Legion Go S, the ROG Ally, Ally X and Steam Deck all kind of play games that basically require you to keep it plugged into the wall. Like anything super new and modern if you're running it at anything but the lowest graphic settings or you know keeping it limited to 30 fps you're gonna have to keep your charger close by because while the steam deck oled and regular steam deck battery life is good it's basically capping out at a couple of hours with modern games so like the idea of making a handheld that's saying oh you already play your handhelds plugged in all the time so just keep this one plugged in all the time and you'll get great performance in return that basically runs laps around literally every other competition piece on the market. It's an interesting idea, but what it really is emblematic of to me is the fact that maybe Valve is right to wait a little bit longer for the Steam Deck 2 until they can get much better performance without sacrificing battery life or forcing you to clip on a massive battery to the back of the Steam Deck 2. Because the biggest reason I think the Steam Deck beats every other handheld, uh, in my opinion, Switch 2 included, and why I spend the most time on the Steam Steam Deck when it comes to gaming pretty much across the board is that it's at least good at everything and great at a lot of stuff. You get good battery life, you get a great screen with the Steam Deck OLED, you get a good resolution at 800p, you get good performance with modern games, you get great performance with older games and indie games. There's a lot of goods, a lot of greats, but there's nothing it's really bad at outside of running Unreal Engine 5 games and its biggest competition with the Legion Go and the ROG Ally. They have the exact same issues running Unreal Engine 5 games. So like, it's not like the biggest competition is doing one thing dramatically better than the Steam Deck. And while the Steam Deck is mostly good and great, I honestly can't think of anything that's downright bad except for the Steam button and the three dot button. They're just mushy and they don't feel good. And maybe the D-pad itself is a little mushy for some people and the bumpers aren't clicky enough, but like those are extremely minor compared to stuff like the overall ergonomics of the ROG Ally being sharp across the board to the point where they basically stopped refining it 
it and they kept it the same but added controller style grips to it for the xbox rog ally and then with the legion go it's cool that it's big but it is extremely massive so making it a portable machine that you don't feel a little embarrassed to take out in public like if you're at starbucks or on the plane or whatever that's a big drawback to it also both of those suffer from the fact that yes it is cool that they have high resolution screens but as we keep seeing 800p or 720p if you have a 16 by 9 panel is the sweet spot so you get this great high resolution lcd screen and then you have to use upscalers with it to get decent performance out of most of the newer games coming out so for the steam deck too i'd imagine that they want to refine it to the exact same point where it's at least good at everything it sets out to do and you know plugging a massive battery into the back of it is not being good at what you're setting out to do especially when it brings the overall weight of the thing to over a pound like it looks really nice and sleek on the surface it looks like a psp if we're being honest but when you have to slam a digital camera battery on the back of it to keep it going that would say to valve i would think that maybe they need to wait a little bit longer till they can achieve that performance at a lower tdp because a big win with the steam deck is that it gets the great performance it gets at around 15 watts on average which is insanely low compared to all of its competitors and just in general it's insanely low i think it's higher than the switch 2 in handheld mode but still it's really good for how low the wattage is that it outputs from its chip to keep the battery life nice and stable and yeah i do play with the steam deck plugged in a lot but i've been playing dying light with the following expansion a lot lately and that's a 10 year old game but it was really ahead of its time it's a fully open world 3d game with tons of gore tons of effects great lighting great textures and graphics because they've updated it so many times over the years i'm running it almost maxed out i want to say at 40 fps it never stutters it never drops frames which is awesome and i get like over two and a half hours of battery life so i haven't really had to play it with the charging cord nearby and having that freedom is the whole point of making a handheld right like you don't want a handheld that needs to be plugged into the wall all the time because at that point why are you playing on a handheld you could get a great gaming laptop or a desktop that you plug into your tv and use a controller with because both of those have to be plugged in at all times and then the biggest problem that i think valve is waiting for also is for these things to get cheaper because this gpd win is like close to two thousand dollars i think it goes well over two thousand dollars for the highest spec i get that everything's expensive like the rog allies a thousand bucks the legion go 2 is over a thousand bucks like we're creeping up there close to two thousand but two thousand at this point in time when i'm recording the video is so far beyond the pale that like it's just too much money so if valve waits to like 2026 end of the year or at the latest 2027 and they can get that performance while not sacrificing the battery life and making sure that it's not a three inch thick device like so many of these handhelds look amazing from the top down view where you're just looking at the controls on the screen and then you're like turn that vertical real quick and they're like putting it behind their back because it's about to be four inches thick i feel like that's another important metric that they have to keep in mind with the steam deck too once they can hit that sweet spot i think that's the time to release the steam deck you know get great performance great battery life and make it look like an official product that you would see on a store shelf at best buy and not think oh did this like fall off a truck or something and end up at best buy like it's got to look legitimate like the steam deck one and steam deck oled already do so yeah the gpd win 5 looks cool i'm not trying to shit on it because it clearly has a market since it's the gpd win 5 and going back to before the steam deck was even a thing even before i and neo was putting out tons and tons of handhelds i mean gpd has been in the game for a long time they've been making like slide up ones with keyboards and everything so i'm glad to see them still in the game and the fact that they are making this thing even if it is exorbitantly expensive shows that there is a market for it it's just like not the mass market that i think most of us want valve to achieve with the steam deck brand going forward so like yeah not trying to shit on it it seems really cool it's just out of my price range and you know having to plug it in all the time doesn't really serve the needs that i need out of a handheld if that's fair but that brings me to the second news story of today's video which is about my friend felix's new app so me and felix talk a lot behind the scenes we talk about what games we're playing we're talking about what features he should add to deck filter and you know the one thing that we've kind of come down to in the center of it all is that the whole system of finding steam deck settings is so scattered all over the entire internet there's tons of great sources out there like steam deck hq and santiago santiago those are my two gold standards like if steam deck hq has an article up about a game they give you the settings they sometimes give you multiple presets like a graphic setting and a performance one either way they dial it in so that you get the most consistent performance with their settings i love that 
that. If it's an older game where I want to see how it runs on the Steam Deck, I go straight to Santiago Santiago on YouTube because he gets in depth. He tries multiple different graphics presets. He finds specific settings that cause insane GPU and CPU load and only tells you to turn down the ones that really impact visuals. So he's great as well. But then you've got Deck Wizard, you've got Steam Deck Gaming, you've got Proton DB, you've got Share Deck. All of this stuff is spread all over the entire internet. And sometimes at the end of the day, when I sit down to actually play some games, if I have something new on my Steam Deck, like Hitman World of Assassination most recently, I spend the couple of hours I have gaming trying to find the best setting for a game. And Felix fixed that with his new deck settings app and it's in beta now. I have it linked down in the description. You can test it out on your phone. I don't know how many seeds like he actually offered up. So if it's not available, I'm sorry, but this app is dead simple. Just like deck filter, you open the app, you type in a game, you see the settings that you need for the game. And it gives you different presets, different battery life, different FPS. And then at the bottom of the settings page, you can open up share deck and get an actual listing for the game. It's just a simple form of function app. And the best part is it's completely free. It's like a companion to a companion app. I think it's great also because, you know, I'm featured in it. Like if you go to the partners page, my channel is right there, which is nice. Thank you, Felix. I really appreciate that. But either way, it's an easy way to find settings for Steam Deck games. Like I don't want to gas it up because that wasn't the point. It wasn't supposed to like change the world. It was supposed to be a free app. You can download, open up and find settings for your games. I just used it with Dying Light because before I dialed in the settings, I was getting a little bit of stuttering after the retouched update and no one had really done videos on that just yet. I don't think Santiago Santiago did and I didn't see one over on Steam Deck HQ. So then I opened up the app. I found the perfect settings. It was like the best real world example I could think of. And if you have not played Dying Light, now is the best time. Like the first game, I cannot believe it's 10 years old. It holds up so well. It runs amazing. The story is solid. Once you start leveling up your parkour and combat abilities, and it goes from having to hit a zombie 20 times to inflict damage down to like hitting the sword sideways and cutting five zombies in a line's heads off and the gores everywhere. It feels so powerful. And I'm like right at the end. I'm in the old town map, which I also forgot there's a second map in this game and it's excellent. It's like a really nice lush part of Haran. I'm really excited to start the following because a core mechanic is the doom buggy, which you get to upgrade throughout the campaign. I'm playing that and I'm playing Dying Light the Beast. When I'm like on my couch, I play the beast. And when I'm on my Steam Deck, I play Dying Light and I'm just like fully hooked on Dying Light to the point where I'm going to go back and give Dying Light 2 another shot because I loved Dying Light 1. I'm pretty sure I platinumed it uh, on PS4 back when it came out. And then I was pretty disappointed with Dying Light 2. I waited for all these patches, all these updates, all these features to get like added in. I went back. The story at its core has issues that cannot be fixed, but uh, they added in guns. So like, if you want me to come back to your game where I didn't like the story, add in guns and do a gory zombie game and I'm there. It's just like one of the best zombie games ever. Like it's up there with Project Zomboid for me and it constantly goes on sale with all of the DLC and there is a ton of DLC, cosmetics, weapon blueprints and everything like that like that. So I found great settings. Thanks to Felix. Again, the app is linked down in the description. As always, guys, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.